Hi, Dale coming to you from my garage again. And in this video, I have a project that's perfect for a beginner. It's easy, it's fast, it's very inexpensive, can be made from a lot of scraps, and it'll help you out or maybe a friend out. We have a good friend that has a little boy that has lots of stuffed animals. And like most kids, they have a hard time putting them back where they belong. So I'm going to be building a zoo for the stuffed animals to live at night. They can come out and play all day as much as they want, but at nighttime, it's back to the zoo where they want to go to sleep. We're hoping this will make it fun to put the stuffed animals away so they will be put away. Let me show you how to do it. Come on. The first thing I do is cut some two by sixes to rough lengths of two at 37 inches, two at 30 inches, and two at 17 inches. For this project, two by sixes are gonna be far more efficient than two by fours, so that's what I'm going with. Next, I take the two by sixes and I clean up one edge on each of them. This removes the rough and rounded edge of the two by six and makes a nice, clean, flat edge. After that, I rip the 37 inch and the 17 inch boards to two and one eighth inch wide pieces, which will be used to build the top and the bottom framing for the bars of the zoo to keep the animals from escaping. Now it's time to rip the 30 inch boards down to one and a half inch wide pieces, which will be used for the risers as well as other support pieces of the zoo. Since I'm using construction grade lumber, I want to clean up and flatten all sides of the boards. I've already done the edges, now I'm going to do the faces. Milling down all sides of two by material really does leave you with some pretty nice looking wood. At the same time that I'm milling down the faces, this is where I also want to make sure that all boards will have the same thickness. This also means that I want the risers, which will be in the corners, to have the same thickness on all sides. If you have a thickness planer, I'd highly recommend using that. I don't have one, so I'm using my table saw, just like I've done in many of my previous videos. All pieces are now at one and one quarter inch thick. With all pieces milled to their final thicknesses, I can now calculate the final lengths of each board. I want the base to be 38 inches wide, and I know that each riser is one and a quarter inches thick, so I can easily calculate the full width of 38 inches by subtracting out two one and a quarter inch risers. From that, I now know that I need to cut my top and bottom width pieces to 35 and a half inches long. Math isn't always hard. Using that same PhD level math, I can easily calculate the final width of the top and bottom side pieces by taking the final depth of 18 inches and subtracting out two one and a quarter inch risers for a board length of 15 and a half inches. Now I can pull out my crosscut sled and simply cut the top and bottom frame pieces to their final lengths. I'll leave a link to my crosscut sled video below as it's my most used jig and was pretty easy to build. You should go make yourself one. No Bronk Built video would be a true Bronk Built video if I didn't show my mistakes. We are about to embark on my first mistake. Then, a mistake trying to fix the mistake. Spoiler alert, it all turns out okay in the end. My original plans were to cut and paint gray one half inch PVC and use those for the bars. I would simply drill out holes in the top and bottom frame pieces to allow the PVC to rest in. I'd drill the holes in the top frame about one and a half inches deeper, which would allow each bar to easily be removed and put back in to accommodate larger stuffed animals wanting to come out and play and then go back at night to sleep. Well, that was my plan. Here I'm showing you how I'm going to be assembling the corners. I'll be using pocket holes, and while I don't think the screws are in danger of crossing, 
I'm going to offset the pocket holes on each side just to be safe. Now I move forward drilling out the pocket holes in all four bottom frame pieces and all four top frame pieces, staggering the holes in each corner like I just described. To test how it's going to work, I decided to assemble the front face. This way, we can see what it's going to look like with the bars and how easily the bars will be able to be removed and reinserted. I'm glad I did this before completing the full assembly, and I'm very glad I didn't use glue. Alright, each one of these project videos, I seem to manage to screw something up in each one of them. So I'm trying to better myself with each project. So this project, I screwed up two things, both of them while drilling the holes for the bars for the cage. The back portion, which I have here where I drilled the holes, they don't need holes at all because I'm not having bars for a cage on the back. I'm actually going to use a solid piece that looks like brick. I have it left over from a Halloween project that I did. The second mistake I made was I shouldn't be using bars at all. This isn't what our friends wanted. They wanted the bungee cords. So the way I built this was I have the holes at the top where I could just push the bar, the PVC up and then it comes right out like that to put it back in. You put it in, you put it and you slide it down. That's the way I built them to work and this is the way the first one came out. And that's when my wife said they didn't want that. They wanted bungee cords. So I went to Home Depot and I bought a 7 8 inch dowel and I'm going to need to plug all those holes, re-drill for bungee cords. Let's get going on that. Because the bungee cords are much smaller than the PVC, the holes in the frame do not need to be nearly as large. So my great idea here was to plug the holes with a dowel and glue, wait for them to dry, cut and sand them flush, and then start over with new holes for the bungee cords. Oh, if I only knew then what I'm about to know in a few hours. There was a much easier fix to this problem, but this guy you're looking at right now, he doesn't see it yet. With all the holes plugged and sanded smooth and flush, I now drill 3 8 inch holes through each dowel so that I can replace the PVC bars with bungee cord. These holes need to go all the way through the entire board. The bungee cord I'm using is 1 quarter inch in diameter. When I started drilling these holes, I still wasn't seeing it, but around halfway through, it hit me. I need to drill out those dowels again. The light finally came on over my head and I realized that I need a countersink for each of these bungee cord holes. The reason is when I pull the bungee cord through the hole, I need to tie a knot at each end so it doesn't come right back through the hole. I need that knot to be recessed into the wood so everything lies flat. So now I'm repeating the step of using my four center bit to drill an inch or so deep countersink so the knot has a place to sit. So let's think about this for a minute. I didn't need to plug the holes at all. All I needed to do was drill a 3 8 inch hole through the center of each of the existing holes and then, wait for it, simply turn the board over so that the larger hole was on the other side. A duh. With all the holes drilled, plugged, and finally re-drilled, I can finally complete the assembly. Now using all the pocket holes I drilled earlier, I screw everything together with one and a quarter inch coarse grain pocket screws. I'm not using glue, but everything should be plenty strong enough, especially since I'm going to be putting a top, a bottom, as well as a back on this, which should add a ton of strength. I'm using leftover faux brick siding that is about 3 16 of an inch thick left over from my Timmy Fell in the Well infinity mirror for the bottom and the back. Because this is thin material, I need to get some supports for the bottom. Grabbing some scraps from my bin, I cut and rip them to size. 
I install them with glue and screws as well as nails. Notice that I'm attaching the supports 3 16 of an inch below flush with the base. This is to allow the bottom piece to fit flush inside of the base. It's time to cut the bottom, back, and top pieces. The bottom and back will be made of faux brick veneer and the top will be cut out of 3 quarter inch birch plywood. Hi guys, I apologize for any background noise you may hear. My neighbors are doing a lot of work outside. You can see that I've already painted the carcass. I still have the top to paint. I didn't want to bore you guys with that in the video, but I did want to take one minute to talk about the paint that I'm using. This paint only cost me $2 for the quart. Normally it's about $10 to $12. And the reason I got it so cheap was I went to what they call the oops bin. All paint stores have them. Home Depot has them, Lowe's has them. Customer comes in, they want some paint to a certain color, color doesn't come out right, can't really do much with it, customer doesn't want to pay for it, so they put it on the oops bin and mark it down severely. They had gallon paint buckets for eight bucks. So I went in and I found this, the color was already pretty close to what I wanted, but not quite perfect. So even though it was only two bucks, and in the oops bin, they still went ahead and added a little bit more deeper color, gave it a mix for me, still cost me two bucks. Color came out really what I was looking for. So when you're looking for paint, ask for the oops bin, look through that, there might be a color in there that suits your needs and you're gonna save two, three, four, five times the amount off the paint that is normally charged. Just a quick tip for you. Installing the brick floor is simple. Lay it inside the base, drill and countersink pilot holes, and I'm using simple drywall screws to secure it to the supports I installed just a couple of minutes ago. Installing the back brick wall is just as easy. Lay the zoo front face down and place the back brick wall on the back of the zoo with the bricks facing in. Then, Drilling and countersinking holes around the back, I use drywall screws to attach the brick wall to the back of the zoo. Easy peasy. We're getting close to being done, so stick with me. Next, we need to install all the cage bars. I'm not sure if there was an easier way to do this or not, but the way I did it was to feed one end of the bungee cord through the bottom and up through the top frame where I tie a knot. Cut the excess off and using a flame melt the end so it does not fray. Then on the bottom, I pull the bungee cord to the desired tension, mark that spot with a sharpie. I pull the bungee so I can clamp it inside of my mark, cut the cord, leaving myself plenty of room for me to tie a knot at the bottom. I tie the knot at my mark, cut the excess and melt the end. I do this for all the cage bars. The last step is to attach the top. I do this by turning the zoo cage upside down and center it on the top. Using my pocket holes and one and a quarter inch coarse grade screws, I attach the zoo cage to the top. Here's a look at it with one coat of spray lacquer that is still wet. I bought some animal stencils to add some fun to the top. I didn't stencil the back portion of the top as I was informed this was going to be used for a charging station as well as books and other things. I'll probably do at least two, maybe three more coats of spray lacquer before calling it done. So here's the final project. Haven, I hope you like it. It's a nice zoo to house all your stuffed animals. Please like, subscribe, and share this video. I'd really appreciate it. And leave me a comment down below. Let me know how you think I did with this project. Maybe you have a question or a comment or a suggestion on, on how I could have done something better. Love to hear it. Anyways, until next time, see ya.